Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 11 of the Tech Chit Chat Show. My name is Ken. You can find me on Northern Viking Explorer and Northern Viking Everyday on YouTube. I'm here with my co-host, Stephen. You can find him at 8BitWarrior on Twitter and Stephen Loney on YouTube. Hello there, Stephen. Good morning, Ken. How are you today? I'm doing well. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. You've got it's your coffee good. all handy? I know I do. I sure do. Cheers again. Ooh. Cheers. 11, episode 11. <laughs> so, Let's go. You had a good weekend? I think so. It was restful. So, so. so good you don't remember. Parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was a good, just a lot of resting up. And, uh, it was good. How about yourself? I, yeah, it was good. We did a couple of small hikes and I don't know, the usual. Too much food, not enough time. No, no, uh, go peak this weekend. Of no, we just hiked around here. There's like a trail that goes past, like up the mountain. Yeah, and yeah. So it's good. But nice, very good. Hope to do one in a couple of weeks. Maybe there's one called Enderby Bluffs, which is pretty cool. About an hour from here, so maybe nice. we'll try that. Try that out this summer sometime. Nice. Yeah. No. Hopefully, I can come up and visit and join you at some point too. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Well, we've got some interesting stuff we'd like to talk about today. Yes. Um, Windows 11, maybe. Episode 11 today, Windows 11. Oh, hey. Let's, let's go. Maybe, maybe it's a sign, <laughs> like what Microsoft's doing. <laughs> very, very fitting. Um, some crypto mining with Norton. We're going to talk about the PS3. Wow. What? Yeah, the PS3. Um, AMD, Fidelity, and McDonald's. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, let's just dive right into it. Uh, Windows 11. There are some hefty rumors coming out that Windows is going to be maybe releasing Windows 11. And Wait. there's an... Lots of different articles about this. And what Microsoft has done is kind of interesting. Let me pop this up here. So on June 24th, they are having a reveal event of what the, what they're promising to be the next, what's next for Windows is kind of what they're calling it. But the internet is in a frenzy. If you look at this, I know, sorry if you're listening, but if you Google it, if you're not watching and you see this new kind of Windows logo, and there's an 11 coming through a window with no crossbars. And it's kind of interesting that they would do that. The other interesting thing is their, their um, event on June 24th is at 11 o'clock, which is an unusual time apparently for, for these sorts of reveals. Yeah, not suspicious at all. <laughs> 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 so what are your thoughts on maybe a Windows 11 coming down the pipeline later this month? Uh, mixed. Um, I I think it could be, there, there is talk in the past, kind of like Windows 10 being like the last Windows, right? It's just getting updates. So this seems to kind of go against kind of that thing. Okay, Windows 11 coming. I, I'm hoping... There's some things in like Windows currently that like I want to be able to do that should already be there. Like it may sound simple, but if Windows 11 allows us to have dynamic backgrounds, that would be cool. Because like right now, like, oh, you, say, you say that, and I'm like, how did I not even realize that didn't exist? Because we use dynamic backgrounds on things like the PlayStation or whatever for years, right? right. And Windows has <laughs> never natively supported it. I didn't realize that. I mean, you can probably download an app or something that allows you to do it. Maybe I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I use. I use an app from. The, um, I didn't even realize that. So wall wallpaper. A lot of people, I think, use Wallpaper Engine. A simple mm -hmm. thing, but it's like Windows has never supported dynamic um, backgrounds. I know of like yes, screensavers. <laughs> but, yeah. But um, a lot of people now use like a wallpaper engine they can get off Steam that will do that. Like if Windows 10, I mean, if Windows 11 allowed you to do like dynamic wallpapers in the background, um, like things like that, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. um, it's simple, but. Well, and I think combining, I know we talked a few weeks back about 
what was it called windows 10x getting scrapped yes and maybe there's more behind that are they scrapping it because they're trying to bring all devices together under the one windows 11 banner right. um so you're a more of a seamless transition between your your tablet if you have a window but like a yeah. tablet laptop type of thing or yeah. even a windows phone um who knows maybe they'll try and push deeper into that market again yeah as we've we mentioned before we were talking about this and and um i think it'd be cool if they found a way and i'm, I'm i have my doubts but it would be amazing if they found a way to bring in the x86 and the the arm architecture like more so if windows 11 allowed on desktop to be able to easily emulate arm applications mm -hmm. and on if on arm applications it had better support for emulating as best as it could x86 applications so there'd be more of a seamless transition between whether you're on arm or x86 devices yeah. um, if they tried and i think apple like i think apple's already doing that with their latest stuff yeah um, and if, if windows had something to kind of uh, match so that when you're saying arm and x86 so arm is your kind of mobile devices just for those yeah. who are yeah so x86 and x86 is like a desktop pc type of device mm -hmm. so x86 is like the kind of it's the architecture of the processor that most desktop computers use is an x86 and then a lot of the mobile stuff you use is like a more power efficient what's called like arm based pro uh, processors which much more can be quite efficient apple has moved their stuff to the arm architecture okay. but there's like compatibility issues you can't just like run certain applications on both you got to have them compatible and stuff yeah so and apple's been already trying to make that link and um so and i think it's been part of the problem with with windows stuff on the mobile kind of them trying to do the more mobile stuff is that they're not on the x86 so your microsoft applications don't work on the mobile ones yeah so yeah. if they just well, found a way to bring that together even i've noticed especially over the last couple of years in the microsoft store they're starting to call programs on your computer apps more often you'll see that term right. um, whereas we used to call it a program or a or, or something whereas now it's it's often being referred to as an app so um yeah. it, it's just kind of trying to streamline it into one yeah but, yeah it'll be interesting to see on june 24th or june 24th i'm quite excited about can, that can i give one assumption that i kind of okay so two bad ideas Okay. One's kind of so one as I've joked before that they call it Windows Nine it should just be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said they should call it Vista Two Point Maybe that those two lines are a two. <laughs> oh yeah, like just just totally like mess with people. But the other one, the other one, which actually might be possible and not great, if they call it Windows One. Yeah. Well, that like, might be following the Battlefield video game model. <laughs> well, even even the Xbox One, the Xbox Series, at, like, yeah. well, that's Series X now, it's not one. Anyway, let's just see. It was Assume 11, but if they do something, I don't know, different. It but... could be Windows 2. Windows 2. Yeah, yeah, who's Based to say? Based on the two lines. <laughs> yeah, right. Who knows? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but then they should have done the... They should be doing it at two o'clock, not 11 o'clock. So <laughs> <laughs> enough speculation. Hopefully people don't take rumors from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get them from a reputable source. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you ever tried crypto mining, Stephen? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't either. Right. I've looked at the prices and that's about it and said, Boy, I wish I'd bought that a long time ago. <laughs> I don't encourage you to join now. No, but anyway, <laughs> so it might be easier than you think to get into crypto mining coming up here, or maybe already. Um, crypto mining is coming out on Norton 3, what is it, 360 or 365? I think it's Norton 360. Is 360. It's called. Yeah. And um, let me pop this up here. So in Norton 360, and I think it's already been released for some already, and it's coming out for everybody pretty soon. Um, like if you have a laptop you buy with Norton 360 on it, basically from what I understand, you can um, just push a button and start crypto mining right on your computer 
without having to get into the dirty dark web and figuring it all out. And uh, it's all taken care of for you by Norton. You just push a button and earn yeah. money. <laughs> Could it really yeah. be that simple? <laughs> um, or will yeah. you lose money by by using more energy than you're you're going to make in crypto mining? So I, uh, right now, apparently, this is only for Ethereum, but other currencies could be coming down the pipeline. Yeah, is this good or bad? <laughs> I feel like it's everybody and their dog like people could teach their puppy to push the keyboard button to start crypto mining. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody really and their dog could be crypto mining. Right. Well, we already have Dogecoin, so. So that's right. Uh, um, yeah, that's a different topic. But <laughs> everybody could be crypto mining in a matter of seconds if you have this. And it's kind of an interesting thing, is it? And do we want, do we need everybody crypto mining? And do we want to be, yeah. This, yeah, this doesn't seem like, yeah. So the one concern is that like the, the bit mining that already is becoming under fire for being like a waste of energy. Mm -hmm. And in places like where we live, it may not be as big of an issue. We don't live with rolling uh, power outages. Yeah. So in some part of the world, you deal with rolling power outages. Yeah. And if you're bit mining, Bitcoin mining, you, you're not helping anything. Um, and then it's Norton. So I don't know. I'm really, I'm conflicted. Like I, I'm not a fan of bit mining in, in the first place. Um, Overall though, if you are going to be mining, it seems like a way safer way to do it. That's true. And easier. That's true. So, and I don't, I don't know, like, is Norton taking a share of it? Like there's other aspects to it. Good question. That's what I'm wondering too. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they are. I just, it would be nice. Uh, like, why are they doing this? I, I don't think, my thought. I don't think it'd be wrong for them to take it like a small portion of it if they did, if like, if, as long as it's clear that they're doing that, as long yeah. as that's part of the agreement. I mean, you're using their software to do it. Yeah. Um, and they set no it up for you. It's no different than YouTube taking a percentage of ad revenue if you've if you're monetized on YouTube. Um, they they're they're hosting it and doing it all for you, and you're providing the content. So um, with Norton, you'd be providing the computer, and yeah. maybe they're providing the software to do it. So it'll be interesting to see as this comes out what the details are. But um, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Is, would you? I don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking if this becomes so accessible, and everyone's doing it. Is this going to like even just devalue the whole Bitcoining thing? If again, if everyone's doing it, is it just going to more devalue it and make this thing just kind of go away? Yeah. Or is this yeah. going to? Yeah. Well, and is it if it devalues it, then it becomes less profitable. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you're if you're using as much energy as you are to create it, then it becomes an issue. It does. So yeah. then you may as well just buy it. <laughs> yeah. And the thing of it too, like some people can be like, well, I I live at a place where I don't pay for the power. I have a, an agreement with the landlord and I don't even pay for the power bill. They do. So our landlord's going to begin to ask their tenants or say no crypto mining. Yeah, right? it could become in the, it could come in the agreement. I mean, if you're start mining and all of a sudden your landlord's electricity bill pops up a couple hundred dollars a month, that's gonna yeah. it's gonna come back to bite you pretty quick. So yeah, like you've you've been a landlord guy. You've you've like you've dealt with some of that stuff and yeah, well, not would, mining. Mining wasn't a thing when I was a landlord. But. No, but but you now would be like, okay, guys, no, like bringing like servers into your little room there and trying to like yeah take the, you know what I mean. You would. You wouldn't be happy with that, I think, if you knew yeah. someone was like just. Well, it, and then at what point you're going to want to raise the rent? Like, if you're a landlord, <laughs> yeah. if yeah. you're a landlord, you're doing it to 
to profit from it or to help subsidize your mortgage. But yeah. if it's moving you in the reverse or you're not making any money from it, then what's the point of doing it? So yeah. And so what's interesting is like, will this stuff then push over into like, even like landlords having own agreements, like no, no Bitcoin mining and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I, so. I'm sure it will. If, if, if electricity is included. Yeah. So have you ever, is there a possibility you could mine on a PS3? I, yeah, technically I think so, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's a different topic, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the PS3. Um, apparently the PS3 just got a new update, which kind of shocked a lot of people. Let me uh, switch this over here. Do you still use your PS3, Steven? Uh, we do have one here that is actually still used on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think I yeah. bought your old PS3, actually. I can't remember. Yeah. The PS3 it. we have now, I think, is your old PS3. But because <laughs> ours broke. Um, and it still works. Thank you. Yay. Um, but yeah, so the everybody was, when was that? I think back in March or April or February, somewhere there, people were kind of, upset because they were going to be shutting down the um, PS3 and the PS Vita store. And there was a lot of backlash on that back in April. And then they changed course and didn't shut down those stores. Right. And now all of a sudden they're updating the PS3. And also, interestingly enough, the Wii U was updated a couple months ago as well. Right. What's this all about? Is it just security stuff, do you think? Or they're not really saying what the issue is well the, the... so the system software update uh in this article says version 4.88 as stated as the system software update improves system performance and i i take this as just being kind of a more vague thing i wouldn't take it as it being like the ps3 is now going to run like way better or whatever that after like all these years um mm -hmm. i think that's been kind of a general if I if I'm right, they may have been using that term more than once here. Like this may not be because I I think I've still been seeing the PS3 updated in this house here. When people turn it on, it still comes, and I I feel like this is more of a generic thing. It improves system performance. Like what does that yeah. mean? Um, yeah. and I that could include. I think it's just a general. Yes, I think it is an improvement. It probably has made things better in general, but I wouldn't take it as anything. Yeah, crazy. Is it more maybe so it. I mean, if you're playing online games that it it optimizes things or it could be anything, I guess. It, yeah, it, it could, yeah. And like, it, I, I, it could also have something to do with maybe they made changes on their end and it just needs to be tweak the settings on the, on the PlayStation. So for online gaming or. Yeah. Or the store it could be for the store that they were going to shut down. They decided not to. So there may have been back end things that they had to update for the, um, mm -hmm. PS4 and PS5, because I think they're using the same back end um, yeah. for the PS4, PS5. So if they made updates there, they may have to do it on the PS3. Yeah. Right. On the, yeah, right. As you said, they had to update on, on the PS3's end. Um, I mean, we still use, we don't use it a lot, but our PS3 gets turned on every once in a while here and right. have a good, good motor storm match or a, yeah. or a hockey game or something. But right. It's, uh, it, and, and then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was believed with the Wii U too that it may have just because yeah the Wii U one actually was more shocking that it got an update because I think the PS3 is still getting updates but the Wii U it seems that they like officially dropped support of it mm -hmm. um, and then it received an update apparently like three years after official support um, but some believe as I saw it mentioned that it was an, uh, a way to update SLL or SSL certificates or something oh like the security with, like, yeah yeah so and that might be a way for Nintendo to like because people might still be using the web browser on it or something like that okay. just to keep it from people getting exploited in that. Um, so it may have just been a security thing so that people don't get taken advantage of on Nintendo still doesn't want people getting exploited yeah. on their, on their systems. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it, it's really cool to see. I mean, cause the PS3 was released in 2006 Yeah. and someone, someone, they still have a, at least one person that Sony working on this thing still, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. We'll see how long that lasts for. <laughs> yeah. So. so, AMD Fidelity FX. What is that? 
<laughs> what is that? Well, <laughs> I was gonna, I'm going to let you lead on that one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, know. what's your impression? So I can talk more about it, but like, what's your first impression and what do you think it is? What do you think it does? Um, if I were to, let me just not put it's it into, you on the spot. into sentences, but maybe I'll put it into words. Um, <laughs> upscaling and frame rate boosting. It would be, if I were to put it in to, well, frame rate boosting isn't a, one word, <laughs> but if I were to kind of like put it in a nutshell. Am well, I fra frame rate boosting sounds like good marketing if you were making the box for it. Um, <laughs> you partly, partly right. So, uh, so Fidelity FX is kind of an answer to, um, NVIDIA has already had something called DLSS dynamic. I forget what it stands for something super sampling. So it takes a lower resolution image and it reconstructs it to a larger image so that you can effectively take stuff. You can kind of like convert a 1080p image up to a 4k image and preserve much of the quality that would otherwise be there. This is different from other techniques. So you can take a low resolution image and you can blow it up, but then it just gets like blurry and don't actually gain more detail. You just create more of a blurry image. Mm -hmm. So DLSS from NVIDIA and now uh, Fidelity FX uh, from AMD seems to at least um, seems to insinuate that it will reconstruct, trying to preserve or like keep that image so that the uh, blown up image will look more like a true data 4k or 1440p whatever excuse me whatever resolution you're um, going up to um yeah so this is amd's kind of answer on their end um and they've gone with a more uh open uh open source or open code approach to this where nvidia's technique with the lss is closed source and more like more behind closed doors and you kind of got to work directly with nvidia to get it working where amd's approach is more open and so pretty much anyone's going to have access to the code to implement it how they like to have more control over it so does this have to be implemented within um a, like a specific game does this have to be implemented in the code of the game for it to work or it seems is it, it seems is that it, it just um like you just have to have it Download it seems <laughs> that the developers will need to implement it, at least at the moment, will need to um, actually do something to get it into the game. Okay. So there's still going to be, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to just like load up Battlefield 4, an older game, and just have it work. I think the developer will still need to implement something on their end. Um, but again, be it's... interesting. Will they be able to patch games then and put it in, potentially? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Um, what's interesting about this though, is that NVIDIA's technique is for NVIDIA cards only for okay. 2000 series cards and up, um, from AMD, they are actually supporting all the way back to the 400 series AMD cards back from 2016, as well as they, in, in their testing, they're also showing support for even back to 10 series cards for NVIDIA for the GTX 10 series card. So this oh, technique is going to support both AMD and NVIDIA cards. It doesn't care. Okay. Um, so they, even on in AMD's, I think in the article you have there, I think if you even go down, I think they might even show, yeah, uh, down a little bit right there, that screenshot, I think is actually on a 1060, oh, a GTX is, 1060. Yeah. So they're showing that it even supports NVIDIA cards, which is totally different from NVIDIA's approach, which is, which is NVIDIA only. This is more of an open thing. So they're showing, yeah, it'll even work on NVIDIA cards. So back to the 10, so back to basically to video cards back to 2016 and up. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. I mean, it's going to allow people to run games at like a technically a lower resolution that gets upscaled. So basically have higher fidelity resolution images with, without having to need all the raw power. So, yeah. and for, especially for like more for weaker systems, even uh, laptop devices and things like that, just be able to like have more resolution and not all the strain on the computer and it just yeah. yeah so but there's still more to be said we still need to see more from amd they've only given like a i think there was a they have an announcement or something they're showing on june i think it was june 22nd okay um but i think i think on june 22nd i could be anyways well no more then they've only shown just a little bit so sure well that's gonna be a busy week 
It's my birthday me. that week too, so of course it is. <laughs> uh, no, it's Microsoft. Well, it's you're getting a birthday present. <laughs> Windows 11. <laughs> Windows 11, and yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Have you been to McDonald's this week? No, I was no. last week. I was thinking about it, but then I didn't. No, I almost had ice been, cream. Okay, I've been to McDonald's a few times this week, but okay, let me preface this. I haven't had any burgers or French fries. It's all been beverages. Okay. So I don't know in the US or other parts of the world, do you guys have drink days? You can leave that in the comments section below if you have drink days. But here in Canada, we get iced coffees for a dollar. Um, you can have soda for a dollar. And then for $2, they've got like a pineapple smoothie or kind of a coffee frap. So um, there's some good deals there. So they've been uh, suckering me through the drive-thru on my way to work <laughs> with uh, their cheap drinks. Um, so I have been there a couple of times, but apparently, so in Chicago, 10 restaurants have switched their, when you go through the drive-thru, you get to talk to a little robot AI robot and do your ordering that way. And it's 85% correct, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> or orders are correct 85% of the time. Huh. <laughs> really? Is 85% good at McDonald's or bad? I'm not sure. I mean, it's like a B plus. <laughs> it's almost an A. It's almost an A. It's almost an A minus. <laughs> do I that means I mean, I feel like I feel like real people are getting like ninety six percent right now. So, <laughs> well, I mean, maybe maybe, uh, maybe not this week. It's only <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you I mean there's a, there's an exception, but if it's consistently eighty five percent, hmm, I'm gonna say no. That's not good enough. Yeah, um, and I I did see from the article that no, maybe it was somewhere else. I think maybe it was a different article. Um, this article did come from ZDNet. Oh, ZDNet. I saw somewhere. I don't remember, I don't remember if it was from ZDNet or, but uh, it might have been here that uh, employees may have still been quick to like take over the robot when it's like failing. They're like when so people still can come and take over and try to like when there's issues with the with the robot. Um, so someone's looking over the robot's shoulder. Yeah, it's still in training. Okay. You know, it, they're still like, I guess that's how I see it as like, it's still, I don't know. They're just, and there's still the question of how do you deal with different dialects? What happens if somebody comes and they have a, a different dialect and the program just doesn't, isn't able to pick up dialects. It can't pick up your strong scat Scottish accent or something, you know, you're from the Highlands and it's like, it can't get you. Um, I will say this though. If I go into a McDonald's and order, I actually like ordering from the kiosk because I know right. that I can see my list of what I've ordered and it's correct. Yes. And I but, that's more accurate because I can actually double check my order knowing that I'm not getting that I'm getting McNuggets instead of McChickens. But that's not a that's not an AI. That's you. No, that's not. That's me. So I I do like that. Right. Um because when there's a big long lineup and you're talking to someone, they're just trying to push you through. So, right. I I like the person at the window. So yeah. so even if I walk in the window and walk in the windows, <laughs> even if I walk into windows, if I walk into McDonald's, and even if I have the option to use the terminal and the self serve, is there something nice about still having the person at the till waiting for me to come to them? Even if I don't. That was the key <laughs> word, though, is waiting for you. <laughs> Why? If, because if there's a big, long lineup, they're not waiting for you. You just have to wait in. Like, if you can jump on yeah. the kiosk right away, or you have yeah. to wait 10 people. Because, like, really, if I'm there, if I'm just there for an ice cream cone, it's quicker for me to just be like, hey, yo, dude, can I get an ice cream cone? They're like, yeah, man. And then it's, like, done. Yeah, that, I agree. <laughs> but if you're if you're like, I'll have twelve McDoubles, five McGriddles, right? Like wraps, right? Twelve Sundays. Like the odds of it getting mixed up are are uh, 
pretty they that, that's fine they increase that's good and there's another scenario where it's like dude can i get the fudge sundae with the hot fudge and the caramel yeah because the, ro the robot's not letting me yeah like real people let you do things robots don't that's true and even if even if it's like not on the menu people Ooh. are able to make it on the menu a shamrock shake <laughs> shamrock shake Okay, now everybody's probably wondering what McDonald's food we're talking about. We're talking about Canadian McDonald's food. I don't know if yeah. you have half this stuff down there. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I don't think you have pancakes in the U.S. Do you have pancakes in the U.S.? I sure we, hope they do. I think I they think do. They, no, someone told me they don't. Well, I think they call them hot cakes. Might be what it is. Well, we we have McHot cakes here. <laughs> McHot cakes, like that's where you go to the, go to the McDonald's window and the robots like, sorry, we don't know, we don't know what pancakes are. I, I'm but pretty, then I, I'm pretty sure they don't. So, okay, if you're watching from the U.S., tell us if there's pancakes at McDonald's because if you can get pancakes here in Canada, yeah, we really want to know. <laughs> Settle the debate. We are on the edge of our seat, wanting to know if you have pancakes. <laughs> All right. Now that we just talked for about McDonald's for, I was like, we have lots of time left. And then now I look at it and we're like over, over time. <laughs> <laughs> not that it matters, but let's move on. Our question of the day is, will you adopt Windows 11 quickly? Steven. Uh, maybe that depends on some factors, but first, how about you? I'm pretty sure I will on one of my two computers right away. Yeah. Just because I do a lot of tech tutorials and reviews and I'm eager to get my hands on it. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, I, for myself, if there's a, uh, uh, an easy upgrade path, like if it's a free upgrade to windows 11, sure. Or if it's mm -hmm. a really cheap upgrade path for existing uh, windows 10 users, sure. But if it's like a $150, $200 license, I'll probably wait unless there's yeah. some really, really, really good reason for it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's, and that's a good point. If it's, if it's expensive. Yeah. Um, and if Windows 10 already does what you need. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and yeah, will it be a free upgrade or will it be 200 bucks? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you're if you're on here, we'd love to hear about it. Whether you will adopt Windows 11 quickly, is it something you're looking forward to, or something you're not? Our question two of the day. I'm going to add this. Oh, two questions. Two questions. Ooh. Do you, would you order your McDonald's in a drive-through from a AI robot? I kind of think it would be fun, but I do like meeting, like talking to people as well. So. Yeah. Once in a while, I'm fine with it. If I had to do it, sure. But I, I like real people. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> want a robot hat handing me my Big Mac. <laughs> Actually, that would be kind of cool, too. And kind of weird and, like, wrong at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's fun talking about robots and Windows 11. We will see what happens. Mm -hmm. Do you have any final thoughts today, Stephen? No. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching and listening to the Tech Chit Chat Show. This has been a l episode 11. That's a lot, a lot to say. Episode 11. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube and the podcasting platforms. Until next time, I'm Ken and my co-host, Stephen. We will see you later.